it always surprises me how many screenshots I actually take. I take a look at my screenshot folder and I have screenshots going back over the last four years since I became an organized person. And I just have hundreds and hundreds of screenshots. It's just, I mean, some of the screenshots I've taken are of stupid things. Like, <laughs> I go back through these folders and I just like, why did I take a screenshot of this? It doesn't make any sense. But the point is, is that I take a lot of screenshots. And in order for me to be happy with the process of taking a screenshot, I've been searching for an application that does screenshots really well. Now, there's a terminal-based application called Scrot, and it works reasonably well. It has a few features, but it's mostly a minimal screenshotting tool. It just does what it's supposed to do. It takes a screenshot. But I needed more functionality than that. I wanted to be able to go through and annotate things. I wanted to go through and have more control over what portion of the screen is actually being captured. And while you can do some things like that in Scrot, you can't do a lot of things in Scrot that I actually wanted to go through and do. So, a few months back, I found an application called Flameshot. Now, Flameshot is an application for screenshotting. That's pretty much all it does. However, once you've used the application, you'll know that it does a ton more. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Is the app is called Flameshot, and this is what it does. So now let's go ahead and jump over into my desktop. And what we're going to do is take a screenshot. Now, you could press the print screen button if you wanted to do that. Uh, and that would work on several desktop environments. That would probably use the built-in screenshotting tool. But my problem with functionality like that is that I have dual monitors. So a lot of times what that print screen key will do is it'll take a picture of both monitors. It will capture both monitors and then you get this long elongated image. And it's not all that useful in order for anybody to actually see anything. They have to zoom way in. It's not a great experience. So Flameshot, which I have bound to the key binding control alt and s looks like this. Now, we'll talk about these key bindings here in a second, but let's just say I want to take a screenshot of this part here. Now, as you can see, it doesn't take a screenshot automatically. It goes through and actually just highlights what you're going to be taking a capture of. And then you can actually move this around as you want before you do anything else. You can move it around, make sure that it's precisely sized and stuff like that. And then the cool thing about it is that there's just a ton of stuff that you can do. So you can do, you can draw squares, you can draw circles, you can go through and draw arrows, you can do text, and you can go through and blur things if you wanted to go through and blur things if you wanted to. There's just a ton of stuff you can do, and you can actually upload it to Imager if you want, right from here if you want. And then once you're done, hit enter. And then once you're done, what you want to do is hit this save button down here, and then it will allow you to save it just like you would normally. And then if we open it up, this is what it looks like, and that's the screenshot that we took. That is really cool, right? It would go through and allow you to create a screenshot that is perfectly sized and can be altered. So a lot of times with the screenshot tools that you can use to actually select a portion of the screen, once you once you let go of the selection tool, it takes the screenshot. Now, there are ways of delaying that. So like if you use Spectacle or you use GNOME screenshot tool, you can add in a delay if you want to, but it doesn't actually stay there. You can actually keep flame shot open up as long as you want you can go through and this window here stays open as long as you need it to stay open as long as you're going through and doing stuff you can just keep that open it doesn't go through and close until you've either saved it or closed it so there are there are a few other things that you should know along with these key bindings so basically what this does is you can go through and show the color picker picker if you want to do that and that would actually change the color of certain aspects of the application you can go through and use the mouse wheel to change the tool size and when it says the tool size it means things that are inside this so for example if you use the scroll wheel while you're in here you can actually see that it kind of changes the cursor a little bit and it basically what that does is it changes like the stroke around the circle right and that's what the scroll wheel does um, those other key bindings that you saw on that screen, Control C, Control would copy this screenshot right here automatically to the clipboard, and Control S just saves the screenshot to a file somewhere. It usually remembers the last place you saved it. Now, the biggest problem I have with Flameshot is that depending on what size screenshot you're taking, these buttons move around, and that's not a great thing. So, for example, if you 
have a really sc small screenshot, you see all these buttons are kind of in a willy-nilly place. And the larger you have, they're kind of spread out a little bit more. And the biggest problem there is that they move around. So if you don't use the key binding and you want to find the save button, the save button isn't always in the same place. Now it's over here. Now it's over here. Now it's down here and so on and so forth. That's just kind of the way Flameshot works. I highly recommend going through and you, learning the key bindings such as they are. There are not a lot of them. Just control C and control S are really the only ones that you absolutely need to know. And then you can go through and avoid having to hunt out those buttons which move around. So that is Flameshot. Now, actually, before I move on, what I should do is show you how it starts. So you can actually go through and do this from the terminal. So you do flame shot GUI would go through and open up this tool right here. And the reason why this is important is because you take this and you put it into your configuration file for whatever window manager you're in or whatever desktop environment you're in. And that way you can assign a key binding so that when you do a key binding, it comes up. That's what you need to know. Alternatively, you can actually just go through and open up flame shot like that and it will go through and put a icon up here in your bar if you have a taskbar enabled and you click on that and then this comes up as well so uh, personally I prefer using a key binding but if you want to go through and use that little icon, icon up there at the top you can do that as well I'm also sure you can go through and bind it to the print screen option if that's something that you wanted to do so that is flame shot it's really cool and it's just something that I use multiple times a day to go through and just take a screenshot. It's a really useful tool and I like it best because it's distro agnostic. I just go through and install on any distro that I'm on. It's in every single repo that I've ever used and it just works. I don't have to worry about whether or not I have it installed because I'm just going to go install it anyways. Like it's something that I explicitly have on my system and that means that I know that it's there. I don't have to worry about trying to figure out what the screenshot tool is called. So like if you're on GNOME, you use GNOME screenshot. Not that big a deal. If you were on KDE, it gets more confusing because their screenshot tool is called Spectacle, which is not intuitive at all. <laughs> Unless you actually know that's what it's called, going through and trying to find that can be kind of a pain in the ass. So again, sorry about the dog. She decides to bark every time I do a video. So that's just the way things go. So that is it for this video. If you have comments, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Evan Tool, Steve A, Cyberger Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Arsener, Carbon, Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin E, Andy, Merrick, Camp, Josh Lee, Data Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Bandit, Six, Vlad A, and Primus. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.